Hi, everybody. Welcome to Paper Wishes Weekly Webisodes. I'm Lene Gehrig, and today I am excited to bring you the foil quill all-in-one kit from our friends at We Are Memory Makers. This little kit allows you to do um, customizing and personalizing in foil on your paper crafts, on wood, on metal, on glass. I'm going to show you what's in here. I'm going to show you some projects that my friend Debbie and I did. So come play with us. Okay, so this is the contents of our kit from We Are Memory Makers. It is a great collection with three different size of these pins. We have the fine, the standard, and the broad. Now here's the thing that threw me when I first opened this box, okay? These pens are, the, the plugs are USB, okay? And that threw me off. In fact, I even asked Houston. I was like, Houston, why are these USB? What happened to the regular plug? And he pointed out to me that the USB is international. You can sell these all over the world and everybody has the same USB. Um, and if you have a phone charger, okay, it has a USB plug in it. <laughs> there we go. That these would just slip right into, okay? You, if you have a USB hub by your computer, um, if you have a laptop that has a USB plug, you could plug it in there. Um, I'm just using phone charger. And um, also, you've got these great litty, little power banks that are so popular now that if you don't want to be tethered to um, an outlet, you could just plug it in right here and take it anywhere. Take it to your craft table, wherever you want to go. All right, so let's see what else is in here. So you've got the fine nib, and I'll show you what these look like the standard, and the broad. Then you've got three different colors of foil to get you started off with. So there's rose gold, gold, and silver. And these measure six inches wide by 48 inches long. So each one, you've got quite a bit of foil there to play with, and you don't really need much. It goes a long way. And then you've got this tape. It's, a, it's, it's like washi tape, but it's a less tack than washi tape. Um, which is really great. It's placement tape and um, it keeps everything down and keeps the pieces from flying away because you do a considerable amount of layering with the foil process. So I'll show you all about that. Um, so let's put this away. Now I should mention that when you're plugging these little guys in, there is a little indicator light there that shows you when they are on and when they are heated up. So let me show you the ones here that I've got going. All right, so here are my three pens, and you can see the lights are on. You wanna make sure that, now these are hot. In fact, Houston just asked me, are they hot? And I touched the tip, yeah, they're hot. So don't do that. <laughs> um, I, didn't, I didn't scald myself or anything, but you know, it is kind of shocking. So they're not meant to, to touch. I'm gonna be using my craft mat here. It's made out of Teflon, so it's uh, meant to take heat. It's heat resistant. You could also use a glass mat. Um, and I was thinking about it, you could also use like a ceramic tile or a glass trivet that you may have laying around the house. The point being is you want this to be a smooth surface because when you're using it to maybe draw, you don't want any bumps on there, okay? So um, let me show you right off the bat what it's great for doing, okay? So it's meant for like personalizing and hand drawing and hand lettering and stuff. I have this picture frame of my parents. This is their 10th wedding anniversary in 1960. And I've always thought how cool I would love to note what year this was. So I'm going to do that. And I'm just taking a little piece of the gold foil and I'm using some of the placement tape. And you really want that foil to be taunt when you put it on there. So I'm gonna put it, get it on there really nice and well. And I'm going to use, hmm, I think, the standard tip, okay? There we go. And I'm going to write 1960 on there. I'm going to get rid of these other ones. And, you know, I don't have the greatest handwriting. But my mother told me something about that. She said, you will never regret leaving samples of your writing behind for your family. And I totally agree with that. Because she's not with me anymore and I love finding samples of her handwriting on old birthday cards and things. There we go, 1960.
Okay, so I can just personalize that with the year. All right, and then also another idea that this book covers this is my Bible cover. And I thought I can do I can do a personalization with that as well. So, Lene is kind of an unusual name. You don't find it everywhere pre-done on things. Back in the 70s, it was so popular to have your name printed on things. Let me tell you, I never found Lene pre-printed on things. And I've just never gotten around to sending this off to having it personalized. So I'm gonna make that nice and taut. I'm gonna secure that. And this time, I think I'm gonna use the fine point one. I'm gonna do some bigger letters here. I'm gonna break out my cursive writing. My grandma would be proud. And you're not wanting to push hard on this, okay? Because it's a melting process that's happening here. So as you're writing, you're just putting about as, well, probably even less pressure than you would use if you were using a pencil. And it's just as you go slowly, that's just melting. On the back side, it's just melting that right on the surface. Oh, I'm so happy. Now I have a personalized cover. There you go. And, I mean, that's not going to come off. Okay? That's, that's there to set. Okay. So let me also show you. I've got a piece here of foil, and I'm going to show you um, what each one of the pins does as far as what it looks like with the broad, when I say fine, standard, and broad, okay? So, oops. <laughs> All right, so here is the fine tip. Okay, and here is the standard. When I take this off, you'll be able to see the difference there. And here's the broad. There we go. You can go. So you can see the super fine line in the medium and then the broad different tips. They're very, very close together. But when you're working with that tip and you want a really fine, um, a fine edge, that'll make a difference. So for example, on this card, Debbie made this card. And after the fact, we wanted to, we got this tool and we wanted to add some little gold stitching around the outside edge of that. Well, how would you do that? We just took a little piece and we just put it right there, lined up the top with the top edge. Whoops, you can't see that. Aligned the top edge of that and taped that down and just did little dash dots, like stitch lines around that, okay? So you can add that to existing things or things that you have made. You can also, here's another card in the fall theme, Debbie did this one where she actually took a stamped image, okay? So she took this stamped image, and as you can see, she went ahead and followed only the lines that she wanted to, so you can omit things. So she went ahead and stamped the flowers, but she didn't want to include those flowers, so she just went ahead and stamped and omit omitted those. So you can edit as you go, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, she also stamped the fall on some foil, the word fall, and then turned that over into that as well, which I thought was great. Okay, and then on this card, I did, they don't recommend, or I couldn't find anywhere where they recommend that you could take some, this is just clip art that I found online, it was free clip art, and um, this is paper, so it's counterintuitive to take something hot and put it put it on paper. But I found out it does work if you're very careful with that. And so what I did was I just took some black cardstock and I went ahead and put my image right here. 
to get some of my tape here. Okay, and I'm going to use my fine tip. Okay, and what's great is, as you can see, is I didn't use this entire image. I just used the blossom, the leaves, and one of the swirls. I didn't use the swirl down here. In fact, I just left that part off. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do some of the leaves. So on the paper, I can tell where I have been by the fact that it's discoloring the ink. It's heating that ink, that computer ink, printer, excuse me, printer ink up. So I can tell it's darker and I can tell where I've been on this. And it's all about keeping your place so you don't go over a line too many times. And move slowly because Debbie and I found if you just move too quickly, it, your lines end up a little shaky. This is also perfect for people who love to draw and love to do freehand drawing. Now that's not really me and I'm not somebody who draws, but I can do these other things with it, which I thought was great. And I love that I can personalize things. Okay, I forgot if I did this leaf. <laughs> All right. Let me just take that up. There you go. So it does work. So, of course, it's paper and you're dealing with something that's very hot. You want to be very, very careful and you want to move steady but quickly. All right. So, um, as you can see, lots of fun things to do with these tools. Um, I love the idea of being able to personalize things um, and they're great for gifts. Um, after the fact, after we finished our projects, we we're like, hey, you could do these on glass Christmas ornaments too, the, you know, the kind you can get at the craft store. You could write the year on them and personalize them. So we have a great money saver on this. If you're watching us on YouTube, um, go ahead and look at the link in the description below. And there's also a link to paperwishes.com where you can check out lots more videos and great supplies and goodies that we have. So thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next time.